Oh, let me try it now. Ah, now we're on. Okay. Welcome to our council meeting tonight. Um, we're going to have a call to order and a roll call by our city clerk, Marcy Killian. The record will reflect that all members are present with the exception of Deputy Mayor Aguilera. Deputy Mayor Aguilera is homesick, and so we did not want him to come <laughs> to spread it around. Um, okay, we're going to have a Pledge of Allegiance and our invocation by Father Michael Carr of All Saints Episcopal Church. Father? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we come to, come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of this community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that affect the people of Vista. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth and for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for coming. In accordance with the Brown Act, I'd like to announce that as a result of convening simultaneous meetings, the members of the Buena Sanitation District will receive compensation of $147.75 for the district meeting pursuant to the Buena Sanitation District Ordinance 2006-1. Um, with that, I'll have the appro approval of the agenda by our city manager, Patrick Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. There are no changes to the agenda. And there was actually, we had no um, closed session today. And so the next thing on our agenda is our proclamation. Um, and I will come down and read that. And that is for um, Huntington Wozniak. And so I'll come down and read that. Is that right there? OK. So we have a proclamation here for him. And it says, whereas, Huntington Wozniak is a recipient, recipient of the World Water Park Association Emerging Leaders Employee of the Year Award. He's worked at the Wave Water Park for the past four years, starting as lifeguard before being promoted to his current position as park supervisor and emergency medical technician. Whereas Huntington is a model employee who demonstrates excellence and leadership in all of his work. Through many unannounced safety audits, he always achieves perfect scores, taking great pride in his lifeguard skills and looking for ways to encourage others to improve their skills. Whereas Huntington's responsibilities include supervising, training, developing and motivating staff members, responding to medical injuries, problem solving, um, guest service interactions and maintenance tasks. The park has received many compliments on his ability to solve problems, to make guests comfortable, and to make their experience enjoyable. Whereas Huntington has established positive relationships with all employees and was recently voted most valuable employee by his peers and subordinates. While attending college in Las Vegas, Huntington would drive down to the training facility in San Diego on weekends to attend all of the training classes. This is just one example of how he displayed his dedication to the Wave Water Park facility and staff members. So now, therefore, the mayor and members of the Vista City Council congratulate Huntington Wozniak on being selected as a recipient of the World Water Park Association Emerging Leaders Employee of the Year Award, commend his hard work, dedication, and excellent leadership recognize his efforts to always go above and beyond the call of duty, and hereby proclaim Wednesday, January 29, 2014, tomorrow as Huntington Wozniak Day in the city of Vista. Congratulations. We appreciate you.
Okay. The next thing on our agenda is our consent calendar. The recommendations on the consent calendar will be enacted in one motion unless an item is removed from the calendar. Any member of the public may remove an item by submitting a request to speak card to our clerk secretary. Items removed from the consent calendar will be considered immediately following the adoption of the calendar. So with that, we move to our consent calendar. And I'll ask if anybody, uh, any of our council members want to pull any item. I, I would like to pull C4. Okay, C4, okay. Any, any other, if no other items are, want to be pulled, are there any pulled by the public? No, nothing pulled by the public. So then I would um, entertain a motion for the balance of the consent calendar. I make a motion to approve the balance of the consent calendar. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, did you, are you, are you, are you pushing to speak, Cody? Did you want to, okay, I, are, is our speaker thing working? It's not working either, so you'll have to kind of make motions at me, so if you want to talk. Okay. Okay, so um, that, we have the motion and a second on the consent calendar, the balance of the consent calendar, so everyone in favor of that? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Anyone, any opposed or no's? There's no one else here, so that motion passes unanimously. Um, so then we will go to item C4, which is the vacation of public street and acquisition of right of way at 210 South Melrose Drive. Um, so, would you, Mayor, would you like a report? Would you like a quick report? Uh, we can do a quick report. Okay. Uh, were there any public speakers on this item as well? Just me. If we could do the report, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> this is a request for a vacation of a public street right of way along Melrose Drive on the frontage of a Valero gas station at 210 South Melrose. Uh, it's at the corner of Hacienda, the southeast corner of the street there. This has been a pinch point for northbound traffic on Melrose for a long time because there's no dedicated right turn lane there. We've had several private developments in the area that <clears throat> have been built, some of which have contributed money toward this improvement. And so we're trying to put the pieces together to acquire the right of way along the frontage of the gas station in, a, you know, in order to implement the project. Uh, we've had a fairly difficult time negotiating with the property owner. It's taken quite a bit of time. There is some city right of way on the property as well that we're exchanging as part of the agreement. And that's my staff report, thank you. Okay, did you have some comments? I, I did, I just had a couple of comments on this one and knowing a little bit of the background of it. And I, I, my comments are, I was a little disappointed in the owner and I know that there was a transition between the owners when the husband passed away and the wife took over negotiations with her attorney and didn't live up to the spirit of the negotiations that the husband had started to enter into, although nothing in writing and legally. I think that in exchange for the 524 square feet for that one corner that we will be getting, I think the amount of money that they're asking in addition to the 1154 square feet on the other end of it, I think that's a little bit high and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth as well as the bad faith negotiations that I think that they did on their end. Um, I drive that every single day, sometimes several times a day, and as much as I personally would appreciate a more, more uh, uh, dedicated right turn lane, I'm not sure I would appreciate it this much more if, with, with this deal in place. Um, I know that the money is there, that we had a $60,000 in lieu fee from other contributors to do this project, and I know the money is there and the Prop A funds have been allocated for it and it's been already allocated in the, the budget for 2014. So I, I know the money is there to do it. My comment is I just, I just don't like the way the negotiation from her end was done, uh, changing ideas midstream, and uh, it just leaves, a, like I said, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth to have to negotiate it this way for this small piece of land. So those were, those were my comments. Yes, Councilmember Coles. Yeah, I uh, I appreciate the comments, and, and <clears throat> we always hate to be held hostage, um, it, you know, for public right of way. Uh, and in spirit, I I agree with that. But in practicality, that is a very busy intersection, and I have occasion to um, go in that area at the busy times in the afternoon uh, to pick up my grandkids on the other side of town at, on occasion. And um, and I know that a lot of people in the region also traverse that area and and I would rather have people leaving Vista uh, onto the freeway with a with a feeling of um, 
of ease rather than a feeling of frustration and congestion. And uh, you know, as was said, the, the money is there. Uh, the property owners have made contributions to get this done. And I know that staff has negotiated long and hard for a year and a half to try to get this down from you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of a half a million to, uh, to a, reas a, a more reasonable number. Uh, and uh, so I, that being said, I will um, make a motion to approve the item. I'll second that. Okay, and I, and I will have, uh, I agree. I, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth also, but I think that, that that's a really busy intersection. It's the only part of Melrose that isn't widened to the full capacity. So I think that, and I think it's really important to get that done. So um, may I just make another comment? Sure. When we're looking at the acquisition agreement, the actual price for the property for the 524,000 square feet was uh, the 19,250. And then for the site improvement, they have 600. And for severance damage, they have an additional $10,000 for severance. Could you define severance for us, please? Yeah, I'm sorry. The, uh, in order to construct the project, we're going to have to close one of the lanes that, of uh, pumps adjacent to the uh, street there on that side where there's a canopy uh, during the construction period. And so that's the loss of revenue that the owner would receive while those pumps are closed. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, I have a motion and a second. Um, so um, I guess I'll say everyone in favor? Aye. Okay, and opposed? Do you have that? Okay, motion passes. The next thing on our agenda, we have actually, um, that's all of our consent calendar. Then we have no discussion items tonight. So the next thing will be our public hearing. And our public hearing is our general plan amendment and zone change at 1806 East Vista Way. So I'll open the public hearing. And John Thank Conley you, Mayor. will give us a report. I think I'll be up here for a couple items. So uh, this is a request for a general plan amendment and a rezone at 1806 East Vista Way, Taskers Automotive. Sorry, I'm just getting the PowerPoint up here. Uh, in summary, the application is a request for a general plan amendment from uh, medium high density to uh, commercial neighborhood and a zone change from RM15 to C1, which is the corresponding zoning. This would revert the site back to the general plan and zoning designations that existed prior to the city's general plan update in 2012. The location of the site is at the Southwest corner of Taylor Street, get to the slide here, and Vista Way. Can you back one up there? Sorry. The site's at the corner of Taylor Street and East Vista Way. It's about 0.62 acres. It uh, currently has a uh, automotive repair garage on it <clears throat> and a small yard in the back for storage paved driveway with access out to uh, Taylor Street. Uh, I'm sorry, out to East Vista Way directly with a side access to Taylor Street. The property's been used uh, for commercial use for uh, automotive repair for a number of years. This is uh, photos of the site looking at the parking area from the west looking east and then from the street on East Vista Way. The existing general plan is shown on the left. It's medium high density. The proposed general plan is commercial neighborhood, shown on the right, which would be consistent with a number of other commercially designated sites in the vicinity of this property. Similarly, the zoning would be converted from residential multifamily, 15 units to the acre, to commercial C1, as shown in the slides. The staff updated the general plan in 2012 and we looked at a number of issues. One of them was focusing on this corridor of East Vista Way north of Taylor Street where the improvements aren't in and there's a number of uh, differently used properties. In an effort to try to promote some redevelopment in the area and promote some investment, we uh, determined that rezoning a number of properties from commercial to multifamily residential was the right thing to do. Unfortunately, we didn't have that good of coordination with all of the property owners and Following the approval of the plan, a number of them have stepped forward with plans to do things on their property that wouldn't comply with the new multi-residential zoning. This is one of those property owners. 
So in an effort to try to address that concern, we have existing commercial improvements on the site. We felt it was best to bring it back and change the zoning back. It makes sense for the uses that are there. It would also be compatible with the uses in the vicinity of the site being commercial. The adjacent property, uh, as you may have noted, is zoned multi-residential, but it's also developed with both commercial and residential uses. So uh, the property owner chose to retain the multi-residential designation that was provided in the general plan. The Planning Commission reviewed this project on the 17th of December of last year, and they voted unanimously in approval to recommend Council's approval of the general plan and zone change. And therefore, the staff recommendation is to approve a resolution for the general plan and an ordinance for the zone change. Thank you. Thank you. I have one speaker. Would you like to have the speaker? Okay. Mac Gadipa. Thank you, John. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, distinguished uh, council members. Uh, my name is Mike Gaylorpan. I represent Tasker's Automotive. I'm here to answer any questions that may come up. Thank you. Okay. Do I have any questions? No. I, just a comment. I, uh, Mac's been a, a good uh, uh, participant in our community and uh, uh, has been very helpful, and I think that this is a a good opportunity for him to uh, make his business even more flourishing for our city. So I would move to approve this uh, action. And close the public hearing? And close the public hearing. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Um, seeing no other speakers or questions, and everyone in favor? A vote? Yes, gentlemen opposed? Yes. No. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you very Pretty much. Good. Okay, our next public hearing, we have one more public hearing. That one is amendment to a specific plan number 14, and John Conley, our director of planning and engineering, will take that. Thank you, Mayor. This is a staff initiated request to amend specific plan number 14 <clears throat> to clean up some inapplicable sections of the plan based on past amendments to the plan uh, to clarify outdoor storage as a permitted use subject to screening requirements that are already within the specific plan. Uh, to allow some additional uses that I'll cover and to ad uh, adopt a new map for the specific plan. So I'll cover each of those briefly. The project location is the business park area that's north of Sycamore, uh, generally between Engineer and Business Park Drive, includes a portion of uh, Distribution Way and La Mirada Drive. This is an older specific plan area that's been amended over the years um, that started with several properties outside the photo here and has been assembled based on different amendments and changes uh, that have been incorporated into the adjacent Vista Business Park specific plan. And so this is uh, the remaining piece of this planning area. This area was adopted in the early 80s and was intended to accommodate outdoor storage and a number of heavier industrial uses. The specific plan map shows the planning designations, essentially everything north of Sycamore is light industrial, and the parcel B is the former Lynch trucking, or I guess current Lynch trucking yard that's a non-conforming use. It's recognized in the plan. So I'll summarize briefly what the changes are uh, proposed this evening. Uh, within the permitted uses category, staff believes that there needs to be clarification for outdoor storage being a permitted use, um, as well as construction equipment and contractor storage yards. The reason for this is in 2009, the city made some changes to the zoning for outdoor storage that trickle into this specific plan because it references the zoning categories and has affected the ability to approve outdoor storage as a use by right within the plan. So based on conversations with the owners association, staff is requesting that we clarify that, which we believe is always the intent of the specific plan itself. In so doing, we're also asking that accessory retail sales be allowed. In other words, people that manufacture things on their site that want to have a small retail sales component can do that, and to allow small delis or cafes to serve the park. We're also requesting that special uses be modified to allow for towing with outside storage. This is also a use that's currently permitted within the park via special use permit, but it's not clarified in the plan, so we're clarifying that and to allow for RV and trailer storage or uh, boat uh, storage with a special use permit. So this would require subsequent discretionary review and approval 
but it's currently not permitted within the plan area. And finally, we'd like to modify the minor use category to allow for indoor recreational uses, such as, inst as instructional facilities for gymnasiums, um, yoga, things like that. That would be via minor use permit and would also be an administrative approval. Some other considerations, we're removing a $50 administrative fee. We're prohibiting alcohol sales uh, with the exception of manufacturers uh, that want to have a tasting room, such as a brewery. Uh, we're allowing an ancillary convenience store at the gas station that's currently within the plan. Uh, there are no changes to the area B that I referred to before, which is the Lynch Trucking Yard on the south side of, of Sycamore, and we're moving some fee reimbursements for prior envir environmental studies, which are fully uh, covered at this point. As I noted earlier, outside storage has always been permitted. There were some changes in 2009 to the C2 zone that affected that, and so our intent tonight is to clarify within the plan it's continued as a permitted use. There are already screening provisions for those outside uses within the plan, and so we're not changing those. We believe that the new uses that are being proposed and asked for by the Owners Association are consistent with existing development within the plan in the neighboring land uses, and that the special and minor use permit uh, revisions because it would require additional review are also uh, reasonable. And finally, uh, there's a number of, <clears throat> excuse me, edits for clarity and cleanup of the plan. As I mentioned earlier, the Planning Commission also reviewed this project uh, in December and they recommended approval unanimously and staff is recommending that the City Council uh, approve this ordinance for changes to specific Plan 14. Thank you. Okay, yes, I do have, um, first of all, I want to say, having read this entire document a couple of times over, thank you. What an amazing job to go through and incorporate those changes and clean it up after all of the amendments over the years. It was quite a job to do, and you did a great job, and, and whether you did it or staff did it, you did a really remarkable job with that, so thank you. And I, I wanted to comment that any time we can remove a fee from our residents, that's a good thing. So thank you for that. I do have a question on the outdoor storage. And um, perhaps not relevant or specific to this area, but for outdoor storage, I've seen places around town that have outdoor storage. And I wanted to know what are the screening provisions in this plan particularly? Um, because some of them don't seem to have a lot of screening and you can see some unsightly things from the street. So could you clarify that for us, please? Absolutely. Within the plan, there's a requirement that any outside storage be screened from view from the public street um, by a decorative barrier. It can be fencing, wall. There's a number of different ways of doing it, combination of landscaping, but generally they, ha they all have to go through a discretionary approval process with the planning department, and so the planning department looks at e each application to make sure that their outside storage area is fenced or with a block wall around it and landscaping. That's the minimum requirement in this specific plan, but that right. doesn't okay. apply probably in the areas where it's okay. occurring. Okay, I just wanted to know for this area what could we expect, so thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I too would like to compliment uh, Mr. Connolly and staff for being um, sensitive to the, the, the evolving needs of our business park and other areas of our community. Uh, and you know when you initially make plans and ordinances and requirements, uh, later on things arise that uh, uh, need changes and uh, uh, you've done a good job of being sensitive to not only the changes of the property owners and the business uh, uh, owners, uh, but to the needs of our community as well. So thank you for doing that. And I would uh, move to close the public hearing and approve this action. Do I have a second? Councilmember Campbell, did you want to say anything? No comment. Any, any second? I'll second. Okay. I don't have any speakers on this, so um, seeing no more discussion, um, I guess we all vote. Everyone in favor? Aye. No one's opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Okay, that brings us to our oral communications. And I have two speakers here. Um, the first speaker is um, Mary Alex Seeker. What's Mark? Sorry, Mark. Go by Alex. Go by Alex. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> can't, can't really read it here, so. Sorry, it's okay. 
Uh, good evening, council members, Ms. Mayor. Uh, my name is Alex Seeger. I'm a student currently living in Vista, um, currently supporting myself while pursuing my education from DC out here. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, portray a story to you that, that left, a, left a bad taste in my mouth. I heard that word earlier. I like that. Um, I was at a buddy's house studying uh, a couple weeks ago. I uh, was parked out on the street. I wasn't aware it was a street sweeping uh, street. I heard the, uh, the car coming. I made a good faith move and I ran out there in my socks and I, I got to my car right when, he, right when he passed me in a cul-de-sac and he proceeded to, uh, after I moved my car in, he did a U-turn and he cleaned this, the portion of the street where my car was and I parked my car and he left and I went on vacation. I came back and I had a ticket. Um, I just want to say for the record, I'm not coming to you all to, I'm, I'm uh, appealing my ticket in the proper way through appeal. I just um, I wanted to come to you today as a concerned citizen. Um, like I said, I made a good faith move and I hope that because the street was indeed clean that I would receive the same gesture. I believe this leaves, I believe this gives a bad reputation to the city of Vista and as a citizen it is quite upsetting. I wanted to bring this to your attention in hopes that you will take action on serving uh, the citizens of Vista better. Um, as a student, even though it's only $60, it's, it's, I mean, I'm still trying to pay for my textbooks and my rent. And so little things like this, I don't think uh, we should be getting ticketed if we do move and the street is indeed clean. So with that, I uh, yield my time and thank you for yours. Thank you. Could I, can I ask a question? Yes. Let me get this straight because I, you know, I've, uh, my daughter was caught in a similar situation. But the, you heard the street sweeper coming. Yes, sir moved your car so that it wasn't the cleaning wasn't impeded yes sir well i was in a cul-de-sac and he was almost parallel with my car when i got in my car and pulled it right into my buddy's driveway right and he he went down about 10 feet and did a u-turn and cleaned the spot where my car was and then he left um, my buddy was out there watching i didn't get a ticket there but i guess my information was written down and i got a ticket oh. the next week so you know, I, I personally am for the streets. I, I think the, some, a lot of the streets are very dirty and, yeah. and we need well, this service, but if, if it is clean and the car is moved, I don't think a citizen should be ticketed for it. I wish you luck in your appeal. Thank my you very daughter, much, sir. My daughter didn't, uh, wasn't successful, <laughs> but I hope you do better. I, I thank you very much. And my thank son-in-law got a ticket, time. too, in front of my house, so. <laughs> 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 yes, it's not good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your your good presentation I appreciate thank that. you I, I do appreciate may I just it. make a comment I, I I've seen the street sweepers and the the person who does the ticketing mm -hmm. and I think from, from what I've witnessed in my neighborhood the person who does the ticketing isn't the street sweeper it's, it's they the, come before yeah. he gets there or after so in most streets okay yeah. so I've, I've always seen them come before mm -hmm. so you, they might have been through the neighborhood and written it down, and then when your street sweeper was on your street, the ticket person was already on another area, so didn't know that you had moved. That would be my only. I would. I would I've hope so. so. That would be nice. Yeah. On my street, they come behind them. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes they do. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Okay. Our next speaker is uh, Stephen Crooks. Mayor, council members, distinguished guests, I'm before you again tonight. Something caught my attention just with this last comment. I had a house over on Warmlands uh, for many years, and I requested the streets to be swept, and it took me a long time to get those streets swept. There were a lot of complaints about putting um, uh, signs up and uh, people coming by and uh, said they were going to have to get tickets for the street sweeper. But you know, there was a, a good resolution to that problem. The lady did come before the street sweeper. She honked her horn profusely, woke everybody up, and uh, every, no, I don't think uh, anybody got any tickets. So there is a good faith gesture, you know, maybe somewhere in the city of Vista. I'm here because uh, a, a great day has just passed. I just became a member of the Anti-Bullying Association. And I think the 24th or 25th of January is the national recognition of anti-bullying. And I suggest maybe next year uh, the city of Vista could make a resolution to acknowledge anti-bullying week. That's Thank all you. I want to add. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, I think anti-bullying or bullying really affects a lot more people than people think. I was uh, out in the lobby and talked to a lady and she, she, she mentioned that her, her family was directly affected by bullying. My family was directly by bullying and um, there's just no need for it. I okay. agree with you. Thank you. Maybe next year you can do, acknowledge it. Thank you. Maybe we will. Okay. Next is Beth Duncan. Speaker. Good evening, Mayor Ritter, Mr. Cowles, Mr. Campbell, Ms. Rigby, and Mr. Aguilera, and all the rest of the council members. We are here on behalf of Vista's Big Give to bring you an update on the events that we have planned for Wish Week from February 3rd through 13th in the city of Vista. You might remember that a student team spoke with you this past November and asked for your support and blessing for this ambitious citywide event benefiting our Big Give campaign. Sorry. Exciting news, we now have our three Wish children, four-year-old Grace, five-year-old Kira, and 13-year-old Zachary. Since Wish Week is next week, we have a lot of work to do. We have been meeting since October to plan this community-wide event. We've spoken to our district leadership and we have full support of our wonderful superintendent, Dr. Vidishka. We address the Vista Village Business Association, local community groups such as Val Vista Palomar Riders and even spoke to very classified and certified employees in Vista Unified School District. Students, teachers, and Big Give team members are very busy preparing fundraisers that will start February 1st. We have many first-time events, such as a district employee-wide sock hop and a flower pot sale at the Students of Hanalei. Um, we are also proud to say that for the first time, our middle schools are joining together for an all-middle school dance. We expect 1,000 students to attend, and not only will the high school students be there to help us, so will the Greek community from Cal State San Marcos. Middle and high school campuses will also hold fun events like coin drives, candy grams, and classroom collections. Our principals are challenging their staff members to donate. The teachers are challenging their students, and we will challenge ourselves. The high schools will also participate in a combined dance that includes Vista High, Rancho Buena Vista High, and Mission Vista High School students. On February 10th, we will hold our first um, golf tournament at Shadow Ridge Golf Course, and we still need golfers if you're interested. Cal State San Marcos has joined Vista's Big Give, and oh, I lost my place, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we'll be holding an Alice in Wonderland themed dance in honor of our wish child, Grace. And for some wild and crazy news, many teachers and principals will be participating in a motivating yet somewhat crazy event, Shave to Save. The participant that earns the most support on each site could shave their head, shave their mustaches, or shave their legs to make wishes come true. Our check presentation celebration will be on February 18th at the Rancho Buena Vista Performing Arts Theater from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We want to invite each one of you so you can share with us the excitement of meeting our three WISH children and their families and learn our fundraising totals as we pre present a check to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. February 18th, save the date. We have worked so hard to get to this moment, and now we are one week away from the start of our collection, and we have one more request to ask of you. We are here to ask for your financial support. Um, our past two collections have resulted in $45,000 each, so a total of $90,000, and it's a lot of work to make that happen, but this year we hope to improve our fundraising goal and raise $50,000. Um, when we accomplish this, the City of Vista and its students will have raised more than $140,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So we really need your help in order to, the make, to make this happen. It means a lot to us that as our leaders, you not only support us emotionally as we learn to be good citizens, but you're also willing to support us financially as we seek to change the world. So your donations tonight will be the starting point for Vista's Big Give 2014 and the inspiration for our 22,000 students that are working to make a difference for these girls, Grace, Kira, and Zach. On behalf of Vista's Big Give team, 
Thank you for your time, and thank you for your donations. There are great things happening in the city of Vista, and we are excited to be part of something that is so wonderful. Many hearts, one community, Vista's Big Give. Where the do uh, you sign up for the golf tournament? Is somebody distributing uh, <laughs> sign-up sheets or? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you have a place that we can mail our checks? Because I, I, I don't carry checks with me. I don't have one tonight, but I, I would be happy to mail a check to you. Is there an address on here? Okay, I can do that. We can donate online. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, may I just say also thank you for all you do and for what you're doing for this program and this project and these, these children. And I've seen you at different events and I've donated and I got my thank you note already from you for my tax purposes. <laughs> um, so you're doing a really great job for the community and for the kids. And I just want to commend you for that and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said we're going to email you first, um, personally about the golf tournament. Okay, all right, thank Nicole's, you. Nicole, yeah. All right. Thanks, Beth. Thank I, I don't fall. Okay. <laughs> we have one final speaker, Cliff Kaiser. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I just wanted to touch briefly on the Palomar Airport uh, Master uh, Plan update. I uh, emailed the City Manager and some of you about that, and um, I'm, uh, I just want to emphasize to you and to the public that the P Palomar Airport is a true asset to North County, including Vista. Uh, it's closer to Vista than a lot of other players, places in Carlsbad, Oceanside, and San Marcos, uh, both to the business community and to residents, and if we get a little more commercial traffic there. We could put uh, residents all over the western half of the United States on commercial airlines. Uh, but there are also drawbacks. Some people are concerned with noise and safety and stuff like that. So this master plan update is designed to allow the community um, both in an official level, at the city council level, at the staff level, at the chamber level, and at the resident level to get involved in that process of updating the master plan for that airport. Just as uh, Cal State San Marcos, the hospitals, the other colleges are all important to Vista. Palomar Airport is also important to this region and to Vista. So thank you. Thank you. Cliff, I did not receive that. Did you email it to all of us? Um, I sent it to the city manager, and he uh, um, got some info, and I can send it to the rest of you. Um, and, and, or he I'd be interested to read that because I've had some questions from people regarding some you know, questions about the airport. So if I could read that and then maybe talk to you about questions after that. That'd Certainly. be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. With that, I, we are now to the part where we have um, comments, and so I will, I guess I'll start with Cody tonight. We'll go this way. I actually have no comments this evening. My comment will be restricted to the, uh, we went to see Nonsense on Friday, and we really laughed, and it was a great production. The, the voices and the talent of the five ladies uh, that put on that performance are to me outstanding. So if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend you try to get down and see it before it closes. Thank you. I haven't seen it yet, but I will. Um, at the AVO. <laughs> right, at the AVO. I just want to say uh, thank you to the Chamber and to our other sponsors for yesterday's State of the City Address and our guest speaker, Jerry Sanders. Uh, it, was a, it was a nice event, and it was, it was really nice to see the recap of all the wonderful things that VISTA has done. And if you were not able to attend the luncheon, 
And you'd like to see what, what the mayor talked about in her speech, if I can just give it up out there. Uh, visit the city's website, cityofvista.com, and I think the link to it is right there on the front page. So it was a very nice event, and thank you for that. And other than that, I, I don't have any other comments. Okay, that, that's good. And that was actually my first thing I was going to say. My remarks and a summary are on our website if you're interested in it. So um, outside the city council chambers is a display of the fifth grade great projects from Olive and um, Great Bine Elementary Schools. Great stands for Gang Resistance Education and Training. And it's a 13-week program taught by our sheriff department um, to help our youth avoid gang membership prevent violence and criminal activity, and develop a positive relationship with law enforcement, resulting in safer communities. The participants present a plan for improving their school or their community as a final project, and those projects are what are on display out there. Um, in addition to that, as, um, there's some other, there's other artwork on display out there also. It's, what is that? There was other artwork that was taken down. It was taken down? Yeah, yeah. Oh. The new art, this is the new artwork. Never mind. Part. Okay, this is the new artwork, okay. The Moonlight Stage Productions Nonsense runs through February 9th, and, the next, and then the next production is Blythe Spirit, and that opens on February 20th. And that's a funny ghost story in which the novelist Seance goes awry when his deceased wife is determined he should have an early afterlife. <laughs> Tickets for both shows are available at moonlightstage.com. And actually, I'm actually going to Nonsense on Friday night, so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, and one last thing, it's, a, it's, fine, I guess it's, it's fine Free Friday <laughs> at the Vista Library this Friday, January 31st. It says bring your past, oh, I see, it's, bring your past due books, CDs and DVDs, and the county will waive um, the late charges. That's why it's fine Free Friday. <laughs> I guess that's a tongue twister. Okay, so other than that, um, 218 is the, February 18th is the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and I'd like to welcome all the students from Rancho that are here tonight. You're all from Rancho, right? Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> welcome to here tonight, and um, with that, city, our city manager might have a report. Thank you, Mayor. I have two items. One to follow up on what Mr. Kaiser was saying, and that is the public workshop is next Wednesday, February 5th at 6 p.m. for the uh, Palomar Airport Master Plan Update. So if you're interested in going, you can go onto the website to palomarairportmp.com um, and more information is available there. The meeting will take place at the Carlsbad Faraday Safety Center. Okay. And then um, just one more plug for the Sheriff's Department and that is uh, volunteers are needed for the Senior Patrol. Hmm. So as all of you know, the Senior Patrol, they do home checks, vacation checks, they check on seniors and general assistance to the deputies. So if anybody's interested in being a volunteer sheriff's officer, uh, please go to uh, the City of Vista website or you can contact the Sheriff's Department at 760-944-4434. Thank you. Okay. City Attorney, do you have any report? I don't have anything this evening, Mayor. Thank you. City, City Clerk, no, down there? Okay. With that, then we are adjourned at what time is it? 6.13?